Okay, folks, Professor Holizak here again with another video. This time I want to take you through a brief exercise of solving a business problem using SQL. And we're going to use the classic models schema that we are using for our homework assignment. Classic models schema. Okay, so here's the question or the problem. Find the total dollar amount ordered and shipped of product lines with cars to each city. Only include orders placed by customers who have made payments in the prior six months. So this is typical of these kinds of business problems. And rather than jump in and try and write one giant query right away, I'd like to take you through some of the steps that I would use in order to figure this out. All right, <clears throat> so the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have our map. And from our map, we're going to kind of go through step by step and try and figure out what are the tables and the columns that are going to be involved in this query. For example, we know that we're mentioning the city of the customers. So here I see the city column in the customers table. So we're definitely going to need that. What else did it ask for? The total dollar amount, all right? Anytime we hear total dollar amount, we're probably thinking about the quantity ordered times the price each, and that's in the order details, order details table, okay? Um, ordered and shipped in the orders table, we have a ship date and there's also a status. So we want to check those out and just see what they might look like um, and see if we can maybe count on using the status when something has shipped. Okay. Uh, product lines with cars. Okay. Product lines with cars. So let's go over here and look at products. Well, we do have product lines here. The product line is listed, but it's also a foreign key in the products table. So we're going to want to explore those product lines, um, at least the product line name here, and see what we can do about finding the ones that mention cars. Okay, and then the last little bit, including customers, placed by customers who have made payments in the prior six months. So we have to go over here to the payments table. Now, here's something to keep in mind. The payments table, is on the many side of a one-to-many relationship. So one customer may be making many payments. The issue that we're gonna have, or that we may have, is that customers also place, may be placing many orders. So this is kind of in between a many-to-many -many relationship. In other words, it might be possible that a customer makes five payments, but they've only placed four orders or maybe they've placed 10 orders, but they've only made three payments. So there's no one-to-one -one correspondence between payment and orders. Uh, and so we have to be very careful. We don't wanna to join together payments, customers, payments, and orders together, because if we do that, we may end up with um, a Cartesian product. We'll end up with the wrong number of records matching up. So we're gonna to have to treat payments a little bit specially. Okay, so what I did is I just came here into my uh, SQL developer and I started doing some queries. So first of all, let's take a look at um, distinct city from customers. Let's see what kind of cities we have, all right? So those are gonna be our cities. Yeah, there's some Unicode characters in there for some of these that it can't really represent, but that's all right. Uh, what else do we want? Oh, we wanted to look at the product lines, product line from products. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so we see here we've got ships, trucks, trains, vintage cars. So there's something that has cars in it and classic cars. Okay, so we're going to want to make sure that we can find um, the ones here that have cars. And we can do things like um, where product, whoops, 
where product line like, I don't know if you've studied the like operator. Um, let's see, maybe we'll do cars like that. So it has to mention cars somewhere in there. There we go, that looks good. Uh, if we weren't sure about the upper and lower case, we could actually make this upper case, but I think we're okay there. Uh, the total dollar amount, let's just look at, um, oh no, sorry, we wanted to look at shipped, whether they've ordered and shipped. So let's look at distinct uh, status from orders. Let's see what we've got for status. So, oh, look, we've got all kinds of cool stuff. So disputed, in process, hold, resolved, canceled, and shipped. So we want to make sure that we're dealing with only orders that are shipped. Okay. So again, it's a combination of just doing a little bit of exploration and, and looking at the different tables that we're going to need to connect together. So certainly we'll need to join customers to orders, orders to order details, and order details to products. All right. So first up, let's get the total dollar amount um, ordered. Let's just do that, that portion of it. Okay, so this is the total dollar amount ordered. So we're going to select the sum of price each times quantity ordered. And we'll do this from orders, inner join, order details using order number. Okay, where did I get all of that? I'm just kind of looking here at orders. I see order number is the primary key. It shows up here as a foreign key in order details. So order number is the thing that we're going to use for the join. Whoops, wrong screen. Here we go. Okay, so let's just do that query. Just highlight it. All right, so we get a, a number. Um, let's see. Let's look at the ordered and shipped now. Okay, so here's the technique that I'm going to do. I'm going to take this query and copy it and I'll just paste it down. And then I'm going to add to it. All right, ordered and shipped. So this is going to require us to use a where clause where the status equals shipped. Okay. So now we've got a total amount. You can see it's just a little bit lower than the prior one. So, so, so we obviously have some orders there that were not shipped. So far, so good. What else do we want to add here? I think we can add the city. Um, well, no, actually, let's go over here. Let's grab the product lines with cars. Okay, I'll just, I'll kind of do it in order here. So again, I'm going to take the same query that we just had. I'm going to copy it paste it down and shipped um, for product lines with cars. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna have to join another table. So now we'll enter join products. Okay, and we need to know how to join in products. So I'm going to use my little map here. And I can see that product code is the primary key here as the foreign key as product code. So I think we can say using product code. All right, and then we can add to our, we can add to our query here. And what did we say? Oh yes, product line like cars. Looks good. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. All right, so now it's a little bit lower. So we're so far so good. So, so far we've got the total amount ordered and we can alias this, right? Total ordered, okay, from orders, order details and products. We've got the fact that it has to be shipped and the fact that we're talking about cars, okay? And so that'll give us a nice total amount ordered. What else do we need here? So we've got the total dollar amount ordered and shipped so far, product lines with cars in them. Now to each city, okay? We need to only, we need to break this down or group it 
by each city. If it were asking us to group by month or quarter or year, we'd, we'd include that as well. But here the, the instructions or the, the problem just asks us, want to break this down now by city, right? So again, I'm going to take the same query that I've been using. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to embellish it. So now we just add city. Now we've got something new here. Remember, anytime you query a regular column and an aggregate function, what do we need? We need a group by. No, I don't like that. Let's put there group by. And you're going to group by whatever it is you are selecting. Let me just tweak this over a little bit so that our things line up. Okay, so now we're going to group this. Sorry, this is cars um, grouped by city. So let's go ahead and run that. Uh, what happened here? So let's see, city somehow, oh, I know why. Okay, we forgot to include the fact that city is actually a column in the customers table. So I'm actually left out the customers table. So not good on me. All right, so we've got to add one more here. So customers, inner join, orders uh, using, and let's see, for customer, it's customer number is the primary key in the orders table, customer number is the foreign key. All right, so now we've got to say using customer number, okay, and then we will interjoin with order details and interjoin with the product code. All right, good catch. So now we've got our customers. All right, great. So looks like we have, well, let's see, I'm gonna hit all, so 77 records. So it looks like 77 customer, or sorry, 77 cities are represented for our customers. Okay, so far so good. If we wanted to make this a little nicer, we could, also um, order by city, how's that? All right, so same query, just ordering it by, by city. All right, save that work. Now, I think we've got it all. Find the total dollar amount ordered and shipped of product lines with cars by each city, okay? Only now we got to do this last part. Only include orders placed by customers who have made payments in the prior six months. All right. Now you might say, well, okay, payments is related here. I'm just going to join in payments. And this is where I'm saying you have to be careful because there's a one to many relationship between customer and payments. You cannot do this join. Otherwise, at the, I'm sorry, you cannot do that join at the same time you're joining with orders. Otherwise, these may not match up. There's no one-to-one -one guarantee, no one-to-one -one correspondence between payments and orders. So we just have to be a little careful here. So let's build this up a little bit. Let's see. Um, customers who have made payments. Let's just start simple, right? And again, I'm gonna look at my map. I'm gonna see there's a customer number here. Great, so let's say, customer number from payments, right? Again, starting off very, very simply, right? There's our customer number, maybe we want distinct, okay? So now we get a list of just the customer numbers, distinct customer numbers of customers that have made payments, all right? When did they make these payments? Okay, customers who have made payments within the last six months. All right, so for this, we're going to use an Oracle function called add months. And what the add months function takes in is a date and then some number of months. And the cool thing about the add months function is that you can take a date and you can add a negative amount of months to get a date in the past. 
So if we're interested in today's date, today's date is given by sysdate. Sysdate is what we call a pseudo column. It's available all of the time. All right, let's do a quick query of that. Sysdate from Google. Okay, that gives us today's date. So good on that. So if we take sysdate and then we subtract six months, we'll get some date in the past. All right, let's just give that a try just by itself here. Uh, select add months sysdate, let's see, minus six. Dual is like a little pseudo table. It just gives you one record. So six months ago, that was the 4th of March. So that looks pretty good, actually. <clears throat> so what we want to say here is where our payment date is greater than this date back in March. And let me just double check my model again. Yes, it's called payment date. Okay, so now this should give us, go to the payments table, find all of the payment dates that happen after six months ago. Okay, uh, yeah, we can say equals, that's fine. So let's see, so here's, customer numbers of customers who made a payment within the last six months. And you can see my list kind of went down. It's only 19 customers. Um, another way you could do this, if you kind of wanted to just fudge it, you could say uh, where uh, sysdate minus payment date is uh, less than 180. Sometimes some people use that like 180 days uh, or 182 days or something like that. Okay, but this seems to get it get it pretty accurately. So now all we have to do is plug this in, combine the main query with the payments subquery. All right, so I'm just going to leave that there for a second. I'm going to go back up and grab my, my big query that was working here. Uh, right, so we need to stick this subquery here. And what we're going to say is, and our customer number is in the following set. The set of customers who have placed, or sorry, made payments in the last six months. So the status has to be shipped product line has to be like cars, and the customer number has to be within this set. Okay, we already saw what this set produces. Am I missing a parenthesis? Yes, I am missing a parenthesis. That would have been embarrassing. Okay, so I can just, I'm just indenting here, just to kind of keep this nice. So let's bring this down a little bit so we can see the entire query. So from the top, grouping by city, we've got the total amount ordered, which is price each times quantity ordered. We've got all these tables to join together, customers joining to orders, joining to order details, joining to products, status is shipped, product line looks like cars, and the customer number is in the set of customers that have made a payment in the last six months. Fingers crossed. Wow, we actually got results. Okay, and that should be the final result here. Okay, so again, how did I approach this? I didn't try and write this query all at once. I basically broke it down into steps, doing a little bit of exploration, selecting some, some data out of each of the tables that we had to work with. I relied on my map to show me where the keys and foreign keys are and build up the query one step at a time. All right, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed this lecture and uh, I will be back in another one.